Wait, what's that? I think somebody's in trouble. I'll be right back. Oh, false alarm. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. Well, I'm already dressed. I might as well go to bed. Have a good night. Hello, and welcome to Talk About Strange. This is our first superhuman episode, so let's get started. I got a great episode here for you today. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Steps outside of our realm, just a little bit, not too far, but I think it's gonna be really cool and it's something that's interested me for a very long time. A few of you have asked me if I have any kind of abilities or anything going on in, with me. So, and if I could tell some more about, some more personal stories about my life. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that and we can have some fun doing that. I'm also gonna ask you to share your stories with me so that I can share them on here. And if you want to cut private or personal, that's fine too. So I wanna go over just a couple of quick updates before we get to that. I wanted to let you know my daughter works full time, but she's still been helping me get some stuff on the store. So there's more of that coming. She's gonna be doing some more over the weekend. Uh, my other daughter had sent me another, uh, um, not logo, graphic that uh, somebody was asking here for here a while back. And I thought we had it on the store, but we didn't because I was working between two different areas. So we're gonna get that up on there. Uh, so I don't know what I'd do without my daughter. So I wanna thank them all very much. I really appreciate them. Anyway, um, and then I just wanna go over something else real quick. So. Um, we're up to 14 memberships. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. It really does help us get further with the channel and keep on going. But keep in mind, I'm not counting on those memberships. I appreciate you all just as much. If you join as a membership, that's a huge thank you. And I really do appreciate it. And I know you know it helps. But I appreciate you all just as much. Okay. So whether you subscribe or buy from the store, you guys all mean the world to me. I do want to give a quick rundown to them as I give them a thank you. Uh, Retina Tankersley, Julie Sadler, Mr. Burns, Pam Singleton, Marjo Wag, Cowie Alpa, Cowie Alpa, Jamie Bueller, Catherine Fitzpatrick, Jeff Joan, Cabal 313, Teresa Wilson, Jill Spear, Yama, is it Yama, Phoenix, Boisley Henderson. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. it means the world to me. Um, and I hope that the membership and the discounts and stuff make up for the membership and you're enjoying that. I'm gonna be doing more, so stick with me and bear with me as I learn this stuff and add more stuff to the memberships for you. I wanna make sure it's worth more to you than it is to me, okay? It means a lot to me, oh, excuse me. So, bit me on the shoulder. Um, so getting past that now, let's move on. Uh, one more thing I want to cover real quick. The fact video that I put out, very important video. I had no idea the, the feedback that I was going to get from that video. The love and support that I got from that video is absolutely phenomenal. I had no idea Thank you so very much for all the kindness that you guys have shared with me and the love and support and, and guidance, uh, advice. Um, you guys are phenomenal. I want to cover something, though, really quick that I think is important. I in no way intended that video to bash anybody, okay? It's really important. I'm not about that. This channel's not about that. It touched on something that I took a little bit personal and not like personal in a hatred way, just personal as in, you know what? Maybe I better let my people know who I am so that everybody's clear. And that's what I did. And that's what all that was about. Now, it's ironic that you guys, a lot of you levitated towards another particular very big uh, YouTuber, influencer that I do like and appreciate. Um, I don't want you to turn away from that person or any other person based on that video or based on me, okay? I appreciate your loyalty and your support, but I want you guys to enjoy everything that you enjoy out there. And, and I know that particular person offers a lot of true information, has, is, is huge 
um, has been doing this a very long time, way more experience than I've got. So please don't rule, rule that out based on my video. If you enjoy watching him, watch him, please. Um, I have nothing personal against him. I did not like a particular phrase that was used. Like I said, a wide paintbrush. So, you know, there's some things I don't like. You know, I should say this. Words matter. When you're talking to the public and you have this many people following you that like you and appreciate you, what you say matters. Words matter. So you have to choose them very carefully. I try to choose my wording very carefully because it can go any direction really fast. Somebody as big as this person we're referring to, his words could take my channel out for the most part. I don't want that. I don't think he would do that. I don't think he's that kind of a person. Um, some people told me that I took it too personal, that he says this kind of stuff all the time and who he's referring to. That's fine. And I appreciate that. I, I get it. Okay. But words matter. So when you use a wide brush, people like myself can fall under that category. And so my video was to let you know I'm not that person. And that's it. Period. That's all it was about. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to move on. That's not me backing down, but I'm never challenging. I'm not challenging somebody. That video was not, excuse me, that video was not about bashing anybody. He does a phenomenal job over there, and I commend him for it. He's been doing it a very long time. He has his style. I have my style. All right? All right. Now, let's move on to some really cool stuff. Enough about that. I still got it. Okay. On this channel, we've talked about cryptids. We've talked about some supernatural. Yeah, supernatural. Um, we've talked a little bit about dogmen which I've got an amazing story coming for you right after I do this, shoot this video. We have a Bigfoot dog man, two encounters, same person, very well written. I can't wait to share this with you. I mean, it's very detailed, really, really good stories. You're going to enjoy this. So that's coming up next. Okay. So today we're talking about superhumans, superhuman strength, superhuman abilities. What kind of abilities do you have? What kind of abilities might I have? So we're gonna get we're gonna get into some of that, dive into some of that, and then, um, like I said, I want you guys to put in the comments uh, what your thoughts are on this, and if you guys have had any kind of experiences like this, go ahead and share them with us. And I, I'd love for you to email me your stories if you have any stories on this, because I think this is gonna be a really fun topic. We can we can go a long way with and have some fun with. If you guys want to, if you don't want to, let me know. That's fine too. All right. So I'm gonna start with myself and open it up. And I'm going to go all the way back to the time, well, before I was born. So here's how it goes. I actually, for the longest time, and still today, remember before I was even born. I don't know why. It's the strangest thing. But I actually, truthfully, remember being inside my mother's stomach. It was the strangest sensation. I remember her hearing her talking, laughing. I remember her bumping into things and I and I and getting moved around. I do not know why. It's the strangest thing. I even remember the day I was born. I remember coming out. <laughs> and I'm telling you the truth. I'm not making this up. I don't know why, but I remember it. Not a lot of it. The glimpses of it. You might say it was just in my mind, but I've remembered it too long. I've always known it. I've always remembered it. I remember being a toddler, bumping my head on things, learning. I, like I remember not feeling like I could see. Well, that was that was when I was inside my mother's womb. I remember bumping into things, or her bumping into things, and thinking I was blind. But then when I was a, um, a toddler, I remember bumping my head on coffee tables and whatnot, crawling around. Little glimpses of it, just little pieces. Now it was more when I was younger, but less and less as I got older. Um, that was my, that was like the, the strongest thing that I remember, like the most, the biggest thing that I remember. Um, and then growing up, I remember feeling like I had some kind of superhuman abilities. Now my brothers were still able to kick my ass, <laughs> you know, so maybe they had better abilities than me, but, uh, we grew up in the country. I loved it. Um, we spent a lot of time out in the woods and, uh, um, hiking, playing hide and seek in the dark. 
Uh, we talk about Bigfoot stuff and sightings and stuff that uh, um, I read. And it reminds me of things from when I was a kid that I never even put two and two together about. But there's a lot of stuff that happened as a kid that uh, signs and stuff that of uh, things that are out there that I never even thought twice about. I told you about my haunting, my first haunting. That's on my first video I did. Uh, but let's get down to like abilities. I always felt like I had some kind of superhuman strength, superhuman speed. Now, I watched the cartoons. The Steve Austin was my absolute favorite. You know, go figure. And then Spider-Man, Stretch Armstrong and all of them. But Spider-Man and Steve Austin, the Bionic Man, were my two favorite. Um... So, but I, I, it was always a thing that was in my mind. I remember when I was little, I'm thinking maybe six years old, we had a big hill that we slid on, would slide downhill. And my neighbor was over and she slid down the hill. Now, mind you, I was bundled up like that kid on a Christmas story. And I was at the top of the hill. And she started screaming because she was heading straight for my mother's station wagon. Remember those big classic station wagons? She was heading straight for that station wagon. She had her head up. She's screaming. And I knew that she was going to probably break her neck. I ran from the top of that hill. I do not know how I did it. Down that hill, jumped, grabbed her feet, shoved my feet in the snow, and stopped her sled before she hit that car. I mean, like, we got to it, but barely. Um, probably saved her life. I mean, I like to think it saved her life. So that was my first, one of my first things that happened that I thought was really kind of a trip. Like, how did I do that? Oh, man, I had a lot of situations growing up um, where I did things that, you know, I really, you know, just made me shake my head and wonder, how the heck did I do that? Some falls, some different situations, um, almost drowned once and uh, was able to pull through that. Um, I don't want to test these theories, so don't anybody get any crazy ideas. <laughs> All right. I'm human. If I get cut, I bleed. If I get hit, it hurts. So, you know, uh, this is just odd things that happen. You think about you watch that show with Stan Lee. Remember that um, superhumans? Some amazing stuff you see on there. People that can handle extreme cold. I can't handle a cold day. These people handle extreme cold for hours on. And these people that go uh, polar bear swimming and stuff. It's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool. I'm not calling that superhuman. That's training. That's a lot of training. But on that show, you see people that could, uh, with extremely fast reflexes and uh, could jump like from way up in the air down to this tiny little swimming pool and, and live through it. Uh, getting electrical shocks with 220 electrical. I've gotten electrocuted before. I remember this one time we were in Florida. I was doing a electrical work and I was holding a receptacle. I was trying to unhook the wire while it was still on. I did that a lot. It's pretty common. But it, I got zapped from one arm to the other arm, and I actually squished the receptacle. I don't even know how I did that, other than the current. But I squished that receptacle right in half. Um, but boy, did I, it hurt me. And I, I had Charlie horses in my arms. My shoulders were puffed up for almost two years. This one was about a year, just a year and a half. I mean, it was swollen up, puffed right up. Went to the doctor. They said there was nothing they could do. That it was that it was fine. They didn't see anything. But boy, I did. Um, another time, I almost fell off a bridge. I was, it was in the winter, and I was, I was on a railroad bridge just hanging out, and I was just leaning out and grabbing the, the steel and leaning. I missed, and something pulled me back up. Um uh, now, I think that was more of a guardian angel, if, if, if I'm being honest. I don't think that was a superhuman ability. But I did get pushed off an abutment once into the ice. A jealous guy, I was talking to a girl that was, he liked, and he got jealous, come up behind me and shoved me. And I fell off the, the, by the locks. I fell off and through the ice, and um, I had to bust my way through the ice to get to the ladder to get back up out of there. Again, that was more fear and and, and probably didn't want to die than, than anything. So I was probably just really lucky that day. Uh, another big thing is I got hit by the mayor of Geneva. He had a big white Cadillac. Remember the Cadillac on Dukes of Hazard? He had the exact same Cadillac. He had the big horns on the front and on the thing. <clears throat> 
I think I was 10 years old. I was riding my uncle's 27 inch 10 speed bike. And I heard this tick, 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 tick. So I pulled out. I thought he's turned. Oh, and he beeped the horn. And I thought he's turning in the driveway ahead of me. So I turned out. And this 55 mile an hour zone. I turned out. And I heard the squeal of those brakes. Man, I let out a yelp. He smacked me. I went in the air. I still remember flying through the air and coming down. And I landed on my feet, on my knees. And I slid about 30 feet on my knees, jumped up and ran to a stop. He said I was in the air 20, 30 feet. He says I probably flew about 50 foot away from him, landed on my knees, ran to a stop, took my pants, the knee, knees part of my pants right off, took the skin off my knees right down to the bone. And uh, they took me to the hospital. The bike got smashed underneath the car. I went to the hospital later on. They gave me a brace just to make sure I didn't have whiplash. That was it. They said, you're fine. Um, I didn't think I was fine. <laughs> I heard like, oh, but I didn't cry or anything. You know, it's probably more shock. Uh, there was that. I've taken some good hits that uh, probably should have killed me. And, uh, but is it a, a guardian angel? What is it? What's protecting us? You know, when these things happen, is it just a guardian angel? Or is it just a, a fluke or a, a lucky, lucky day? What is it? Is it a superhuman strength? Now, again, like I said, I always thought, like, if I wanted to run fast, if I concentrated, I always felt like I could run just super fast. Not uh, bionic man fast, but faster than normal. I thought I could run faster than normal. Um, I thought I had telekinesis for the longest time. I would concentrate so hard to move stuff. You'd swear I'd get, I almost thought I was going to get a bloody nose. I so hard. And I believed I could do it. I really did. But it's like there's something blocking it from actually happening. It was always just barely out of reach. Was it actually there? Is it training? Just with training, would you have it? I think a lot of people have these abilities. Um, telekinesis, uh, mind control, or uh, mind reading. Um, that's another thing. Uh, I think my strongest ability that I have and I always have had, is I'm an empath. I didn't really know what that meant for a lot of years. But now I do. I pick up on people's feelings and emotions. I think you guys have seen that in my episodes. Uh, if I'm reading something that somebody wrote, for some reason, it's like I could pick up on their actual feelings. And um, sometimes it's hard for me to go into a busy place because I pick up on so many emotions that it's actually very hard for me. And it just I think a lot of people have that happen to them, but uh, it, it's real strong with me. If, I, if I'm near somebody that's sad, I'm sad. Even if I don't know who it is, I'm sad. If, uh, if somebody's angry, I'm angry. Sometimes I'll be angry and I don't even know why. And I, you know, over the years I've figured out what's going on with that. Um, some of it they call channeling as well. That if somebody's not there, but you're picking up on it, if it's somebody you know or somebody you're close to, I've actually called people when I had that feeling and found that there was something wrong with them or they were upset, talked to them. That's been something I've had my whole life that I've been able to do. Um, I uh, was working on a roof. I did a lot of construction work, I told you this, throughout my life. And there was this one time I was working on a roof and it was an aluminum ladder and an aluminum gutter. Bad combination. So I went to get down and the ladder shot out from underneath me. Well, it just slipped, and I fell. And I was past that porch roof that I was on. My buddy was on the other side working. And he said, I disappeared. He says, I, he don't know how I did it, but I came up out of nowhere, and I pinched the drip edge on the other roof. It was out of my reach originally. I pinched the drip edge and pulled myself back up, grabbed the ladder, and pulled the ladder back up underneath me. No idea how I did that. And I've had that happen a few times, stuff like that, but... That, that was incredible. But <laughs> underneath me, they had a rock garden with a bunch of stakes. And I mean, a bunch of these stakes would, and they're cut like spears. I mean, Dracula would have had a bad day there. <laughs> it was just all stakes. If I had fallen, I would have been killed or damn close to it, probably dead. But uh, somehow I managed to get back up there. Fear, was it fear, adrenaline? What was that? Was it some kind of a superhuman strength that, you know, you just, it unlocks at certain times. I heard recently about that 
those two daughters that saved their father, the tractor flipped over on top of him, laying on his chest, the steering wheel was on his chest. These two girls picked this, the front, I mean, the other side, I tracked 3,000 pounds, two girls, his daughters, lifted that tractor off from him enough to get him out. You hear about people lifting cars, and they say it's because of adrenaline, but I don't care how much adrenaline you have in you. If you have that, if you can call on that kind of adrenaline to lift a car or a tractor, you have superhuman strength. I don't know any other way to put it. But anyway, I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what kind of superhuman abilities that you think you might have or experiences or somebody you know that has had that. You want to stay private? That's absolutely fine. I completely respect that. Send them to me. Let me know you want to keep it private. But I think we could have a lot of fun learning about different types of superhuman abilities and, and what else other people have out there. I think we'll be surprised about what we find out. Again, I'll say, I'm not superhuman. If I get cut, I bleed. <laughs> so we don't need to test any theories, okay? Keep that in mind. But I think it'll be a great fun topic to have. And um, who knows what we might learn in the meantime. Anyway, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I got to get back to the other video that you guys are going to want to see. We're gonna, I'm going to get this all edited and put them out there. And I'll see you again really soon.